Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. In the last episode, it was about a month ago since I last recorded this game. I apologize profusely, but there have been issues with recording, and uh, still there are issues with recording, so now I'm doing post-commentary while playing this game. So in the last episode, we arrived here in North Clock Town, so let's go into the Fairy Fountain. Now look at this! There are lots of fairies there. I wonder what's going on. Let's go check it out. Oh no, the Great Fairy! Well, I'm sure that she's in there somewhere. Let's go and check it out. Young one, please hear my plea. I have been broken and shattered by to pieces by the masked skull kid. Please find the one stray fairy lost in town and bring her to this fairy fountain. Well, that can't be good. Fortunately, instead of wandering around and uh, searching for a missing for one for a fairy just like that one, those that were in there, uh, I know exactly where to go. So I will take you guys there, but not before checking out this... Ah, uh, crap. I hate this guy. I really do. Anybody who's played Wind Waker hates this guy. Alright, so let's just talk to him. What's this? Green claws? White fairy? Sir, could you by chance be a forest fairy? Oh my! My name is Tingle. I think I am the same as you, sir. A forest fairy. Alas, although I am already age 35, no fairy has come to me yet. My father tells me to grow up and act my age, but why? Yes, he is 35 years old, and he is that short. I tell you, Tingle is the very reincarnation of a fairy. Now, while I stand here waiting for a fairy on my own, I sell maps to help out my father. Lucky, lucky, you're so lucky to have a fairy. I know, I know, we should be friends. Yes, yes, in exchange, I will sell you a map for sheep as a sign of my friendship. Will you buy one of Tingo's maps? Yes, we will. Now, we have the option of buying the Clocktown map or the Woodfall map. But as you see, the Woodfall map is 40 rupees, and we are exactly one rupee shy of buying it. So instead, we'll buy the Clocktown map. Now, there is actually a good reason as to why uh, I prefer buying the Clocktown map here and not the Woodfall map. That is because um, it, it, is, it is cheaper to buy the Woodfall map in Woodfall. Like, there it will cost 20 rupees instead of 40. So, well, call again. <laughs> These are the magic words that Tingle created himself. Don't steal them. Of course not, buddy. Alright, so I'm going to run over here and uh, grab some rupees, because we're going to need as many rupees as we can for, some, for something that I really want to take care of before before the end of these three days. So, now that now that we've gotten some money and a map, <clears throat> let us go to, uh, let us go find that missing piece. Now, what is that noise? Oh, hello, Mr. Postman. <laughs> I remember the postman's there. And run away from the dog, run away from the dog! That is mainly because uh, the dog is very, very annoying when you're a Deku. Uh, they will run, they will, they will tackle you and take you down. Now look, there's a missing piece, so let's go grab it. Please hear my plea, the mask okay, has broken me. <laughs> By the way, if you hear any screaming in the background, that is because um, I am uh, I'm watching uh, uh, Chugga Conroy's uh, Let's Play of Majora's Mask at the same time as this. In fact, Chugga Conroy was one is one of my inspirations that got me started into Let's Playing, and I really did not mean to start that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I recorded this yesterday, so uh, along with all the other footage from uh, the rest of the from the rest of the first three days. So this will be put up. This will be put up today on uh, the the end of January. This owl statue will be come important later, by the way. Uh, now, as for reasons as to why I have been uh, slow with my recording. Um, I, I have issues with, uh, with, um, skipping in the video. Um, for example, I'll be just playing along, and in the, in the video recording, it'll actually skip a bit, like, speed up a tiny bit, and just mess up my audio syncing. So, I cannot, cannot do anything about that. I may have to re I may have to rethink my recording stuff. And here's the Great Fairy. To be quite honest, I don't hate the Great Fairy. Um, I don't I don't like her either. She's just kind of there. 
Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, thanks to all that, there I've been tr attempting to, re to record this episode for a long time now, and uh, it's just not turning out right. I've been getting sick, been been running into issues with the, with audio and video syncing, so yeah. And so we get date raped. And Holy crap our eyes glow! You've been granted magic power in your current form, press B to shoot bubble blasts. And press press and hold B to blow a big bubble. Release B to shoot it. Your magic power decreases when you shoot. Replenish it with magic jars and potions. I tend to read fast, so I have to speak really fast when reading the text of this stuff. Basically, now she's telling us to go to the observatory outside of, outside of the clock tower. However, there is only one way to do that, and you'll actually see a little hint the minute we walk outside. So, we've, we've gotten the Great Fairy back to normal, and now we must do stuff. Now, see that Tingle is floating on a balloon there now. That is actually a hint of what we must do, and I don't like the look of that mask on the balloon. So... Let's pop it. With a bubble. Bubbles are greater than blow darts! <laughs> and with that, this boy, Jim, is surprised. Are you the one who just sh popped that up there? Not bad for a Deku scrub. Hey, that is racism. That is racism, and you are a very bad boy for, for saying stuff like that. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, this is the next little bit that we have to do. In Majora's Mask, we have to play a game with these kids. A game of hide and seek. And I'm sorry that and I'm sorry if I sound a little uh, messed up at the moment. I'm currently dealing with cold and and there's stuff going on, so <laughs> I love how the I love how that one little kid is like, no like Chugga Conroy. <laughs> and that was ridiculously easy. Apparently, you can spin into these kids and knock them down before you even touch them. Which makes no sense to me. And look, there's Jim! Let's get him. We knock him down, and then we tackle him. And there are three left. Fortunately, I know where they are. And so we head into East Clocktown, I think, is the right one. Yeah, East Clocktown. Hey, look! It's the guy that tried to, it's tried, that tried to sneak into Hyrule Castle. Uh, welcome to East Clocktown. Um... Now you hear the chicken. Oh, by the way, that boy uh, is is the gatekeeper for the place. That's where you turn in the code. Uh, you'll notice that that boy has a chicken. Uh, so basically, we want to get rid of that chicken because he will fly away on it if he can. So then we shoot him with a bubble and we knock him down again. And that's an easy way to catch up with any of the kids. Now there's another kid on that roof over there. You might have saw him before he went behind the little tapestry over there. So... And I attempt to look up that tattle. And the phone is ringing. That figures. Well, whatever. I can talk through the phone ringing. Um, <clears throat> basically, Tattle will explain that, will say that you have, will just keep telling you how much time you have left doing certain things, like catching the kids, or, uh, see, did you notice there how the video kind of sped up there? That is the exact reason as to why I have been having issues with recording. So I may have to try something else in order to get this to work. I don't know what. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I'm a little hoarse today. And this is West Clock Town. The place with the last kid where you can see him right there. Instead of using a bubble, I attempt to run into him immediately, and I almost lose him, so that just that just makes me decide to use a little uh, bubble on him. And with that, we caught all the kids. If only you were human. Then I could give you an original Bomber's Notebook and make you a member. What do you guys think? No way! No scrubs! You're all racists! They explained that they let a kid who wasn't human join the gang, and they regretted it, but they will still teach us the code, even though we're not official Bombers members. And so this time, the code is 51342. Remember that for later. Um, 
it's important that we remember that code, and I'm going to grab more rupees because I will need them for later. Um, basic, basically, <clears throat> the code changes every time I every time I re-recorded this, and it's a lot later in the day than I than I uh, expected it to be. Um, basically, um, I have to every time I've attempted to re-record this. Um, I had to reset reset my game, so there's that. Um, but fortunately, this is the last time I'm going to re-record it. But but this will not be the last time that I do post commentary for a while. And woo, it's dark in here. <clears throat> yes, my TV is a lot brighter than this uh, than the recording is. I don't know why. Might be it might be have to do with the cables that I use, but oh well. And now we wait for the skull to turn around, and I kill him with a bubble. What a wimp! And that cl that uh, bell ringing means that the day is almost over. It's about to transition to the night phase, and there's another Majora's balloon which we pop with a bubble uh, once again. And with that, we climb up the ladder, and it's the night of the first day. And now, welcome to the observatory. That scarecrow will be important for later. Um, we climb up these stairs, climb on the little platform that's right here, and and we talk to the old man. Well, well, a strange-looking child has joined me today. Are you a new friend of the farmer's game? Hmm, your manners seem much better than those of your mischievous friend from the other day. <laughs> that ill-mannered troublemaker from the other day said he'd break my instruments. He said he'd steal my moon's tear. There was no stopping him. Even now, just watch him. He's probably causing trouble around the clock tower. Will you gaze into the telescope? Yes, we will. And if we look at the very top, we'll notice there's the skull kid. And what's he looking at? What's he looking at? Oh, good lord! Good lord! What is that? What? Wait, what is that? How the hell are we looking down? And he spanks his ass and flies away. He's that magical. Spanking his ass allows him to fly. My ass gives me the power to fly. Well, did you find that troublemaker? And that loud noise, what was it? Perhaps another moon's tear has fallen nearby. Go through that door and look outside. But I wonder how that troublemaker got on top of the clock tower. The only way up there is through the clock door, and that opens only on the eve of the carnival. Oh, well. We'll have to worry about that later. But that moon was a little creepy. Anyway, this is a moon's tear. It is called that because it falls from the eye region of the moon. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, that is about all we can do today, do for this episode. Um, in the next episode, we will be we will be doing some mini games. Mi I guess I guess that's what it is. Yeah, mini games to uh, collect a piece of heart, and hopefully, be getting something that allows us to carry more rupees. I'll see you guys then.